So my neighbor across the street loves Jesus. You know how I know that? In the four conversations, totaling about 30 words we've had, she's mentioned him three times. If they were dating, I'd say the relationship seemed unhealthy. Now, don't get me wrong. She's a nice lady. She worked for New Jersey Public Services for 30 years. She rents the other side of her house to a low-income family, and she doesn't yell at me for how long it takes me to shovel my sidewalk. But when I say religion poisons everything, it even gets to my sweet little old lady neighbor. Take, for example, the first time we met. My wife and I moved into the house, and so we made brownies for all of our neighbors. And when we brought her hers, she was just so lovely and friendly and then immediately informed us that we were a blessing from Jesus Christ, which is weird because I do not remember him being at the mortgage signing. And also, I look pretty Jewish, so that's a very strange thing to say to me. Now, Contrary to Kevin Sorbo's nightmares, as atheists, we do not, in fact, hiss and flee when people say dumb religious shit to us. So we smiled and said we felt very lucky to be in the neighborhood, which we do. But every time I've seen her since, God has just made his way into the conversation. When there were massive floods in my neighborhoods, destroying dozens of homes earlier this year, with the very, very lucky exception of ours and hers, as we cleared debris from our sidewalk, she couldn't help but tell me how blessed she felt by God's grace. Not lucky, blessed. Now, look, I know that when my neighbor says blessed, she means lucky. But when you think about the difference between blessed and lucky, that's pretty fucking insidious, right? We don't happen to live on a high street in my neighborhood. God wanted that lady two blocks down to lose all the shit in her basement, including her wedding albums. I didn't roll incredibly well on the universal dice to end up with the family and job that I did. God intended for me to make dick jokes and for other people to starve to death, right? It's a linguistic shortcut for a rejection of empathy. And it's no coincidence that it's a religious one. I mean, if God intends for poor people to be poor and rich people to be rich, who are we to challenge his wisdom? Why on earth would we spend our time trying to improve the lives of others? If God wanted them to be happy, he'd do it. But as an atheist, we don't have that luxury. Right? I know damn well that I rolled lucky dice and that even the things I imagined to be my own doing, like hard work and laudable personal qualities, are just the dice I didn't know were loaded in my favor. As an atheist, it becomes startlingly obvious that the moment I get a break, I got to start spreading it around to others. As Tim Ryan said, as he gloriously ended his 2016 presidential campaign with the realization that the president would be required to speak publicly, nobody is coming to save us. But the good news is we're not alone. Not really. We have each other. And we are real, be that community or individual. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we can get to work.